German question comes in, just put the headphones in. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for coming. Um, does anyone want to kick us off? Paul, yeah. Oh, microphone. Thanks. Hi, Leandro. Hi. Just wondering, after Sunday, how ready are this group of players to, to react in an arena like this at this stage of the season? I think um, everyone is ready. Like you said, I think we can use it as a reaction. Um, it's a big opportunity for us. Um, it's on the biggest stage, so uh, everyone wants to show um, what we are capable of. And um, yeah, there's no better way to do it tomorrow. Simon? Aleandro, just when you've got you know, people in the title race sort of saying Manchester City have, have won it, does when you have people writing you off motivate the squad even more? Um, I don't think we need anyone to motivate us. Um, I think our group is um, experienced enough um, to deal with those kind of situations. We had it last year as well. Um, everyone still believes in it, we are still tight um, and yeah, six games left in the Prem and we, all, we want to win them all. Sam, just down here. Uh, you mentioned last year, how, how different do you think the team and the squad is now compared to a year ago? Um, yeah, first of all, I would say more experienced. Uh, we had that one last year. Um, and yeah, we have just such a good squad um, with quality players who can decide games um, as well. <laughs> Last couple of weeks, months, how we defended uh, our goal as well. So I think just in general, we, we evolved and yeah, we were, we're still in a really good moment. Kaya? Um, hi Leo, um, you mentioned the experience from last season in the title race, but at this stage of the Champions League, for most of the squad it's their, their first time experiencing it. I wonder, what have you learned across the course of the competition, what did you learn from the first leg? And also as one of the more experienced players in the, in the group, do you feel sort of a need to, to help the younger players through it, through the, sort of the difficult periods in this, this run? Um, that every game is tough. Um, yeah, we have experienced it uh, in the group stage uh, as well as Porto and last game, but I think we showed uh, character as well, especially last game um, where we came back and obviously yeah, it's a, it's a top side where we're playing against and uh, they can hurt you in many different ways and um, we need to be uh, on, top of, on top of our game. Your, your goal last week was, I think it was the sixth goal you've scored coming off the bench, that's more than any other player in Europe's top five leagues this season. It's almost because of that a view of maybe you're better as an impact player. As a, as a you know player yourself, is that is that a tag you would appreciate, or would you much rather kind of be seen, you know, more as a as someone who, can, who makes more of an impact from the start? Um, I think I've done it both from the start and as an impact. Obviously, it's nice that you can bring that to the team. Um, even when you're on the bench, you can come in and help the team to get goals, and um, that's nice for me. But I think I can do either uh, start, I think I showed myself as well, but um, like I said, I'm always ready to help the team is it as a sub or as a starter. One more up here. Hi. How special is it for you to, to play a quarterfinal in Champions League here in Munich and how would you compare Bundesliga to, to the Premier League? Yeah, it's very special. Um, I think that's where you live for as a football player to come to these stages and to such sta stadiums. Um, hard to compare, it's hard. Uh, I've never played in the Bundesliga, so for me, it's, uh, I can't really say anything on it. I know they're very competitive in both leagues, and that's the only thing I can say. Yeah, just here. Hi. Uh, a lot's been made of Arsenal and getting to this part of the season and, and things slipping away. Is it something you've spoken about as a squad not missing this opportunity and letting pressure affect you at this part of the season? Um, not, not in particular, but I think we had <laughs> just because of one game, there's a lot of talks, but we have been really good, especially this year. We were unbeaten up until that last game. 
And that, that's what happens in football. We just need to keep going. Like I said before, we, we want to win every game from now. Um, that's how we approach every game. And yeah, we just need to keep the right man mindset. Anyone else? Yeah, one more, Paul. Final one. <laughs> Wonder, have you practiced penalties if it comes to that? And if so, would you would you step up and take one if it if it does reach that stage of the game? Um, to be fair, we do it throughout the whole season. Um, and every uh, game we play uh, on training, we always do pens as well. So I think that helped us as well throughout the season already. Um, and yeah, of course, if, if the manager wants me to take one, I, I've. I've showed it as well with the Community Shield as well, and last season I took one in the Europa League, so um, I will always be ready to take one. Cool. We'll finish it there. Thank you, guys. Good evening, everyone. If you have a question, raise your hand and we'll come to you. Um, I'll, look, I'll look down to Paul Gilmore from, from Sky Sports UK. Hi, Mikhail. Hi. How defining a week is this in your season? and What do you want to see from your players tomorrow night? A performance that put us in the Champions League semi-final. And all the preparation has been uh, to achieve that. And... Um, and we have earned it. We have earned it for for ten months and everything that we did last season um, to start that journey in the Champions League after so many years. And uh, and tomorrow I have an unbelievable opportunity to make it happen. Okay, John Cross from the Mirror. Hello, Mikel. What, what's Thanks. the atmosphere been like since since Sunday? Is it a dressing room that's immediately determined to kind of put the record straight and embrace this challenge? What's it been like? I'll throw the game away and the one that we played a few days ago because regardless of that result uh, is going to have no impact in what's going to happen tomorrow. 
refocus and um, and start to build um, the confidence, the trust, the understanding of the performance that we have to put tomorrow um, to beat them and, and be through in the time. Okay, Sammy Mockbell from the Mail. Hi. Do your players to take the emotion out of the occasion or is it a case that you actually want them to use that kind of raw emotion to thrive in, 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 in that hotbed of pressure? Emotion is needed in football is, is tweaking it, tweaking, tweaking and, and touching the right button in the right time uh, for the team to be always stable, be hyped when it has to be hyped. And I think we did that really well in London because uh, after going, scoring the first goal, we had a game that we had a big chance to score the second one. And then suddenly in five, ten minutes, they are ahead. And we were really controlled, really mature, not to throw everything away in that moment, find our rhythm, our moment, to score a really good goal. And the reaction of the team was straight away to, to try to score the third one. Ian from the BBC. Mikel, many of your players haven't been involved at this stage of the competition before, yet Bayern have lost their last three quarter-finals of the Champions League, so you could say that they're scarred by failure. How do you approach it and how do you alleviate the pressure from your players for such a big game? Well, as you said, uh, most of our players, they haven't experienced um, an eye like this and, um, and it's going to be the first one and uh, they are super motivated, um, they are prepared, they feel confident. And it's something that tomorrow we're going to have to show um, against an opponent, as you said, that have this experience, um, but we want to make it happen. Mark from PA. Hi. A few times this season about how you and this team changed recent history, you go to the Etihad, go to Anfield, where you've had poor records. We've had a poor record here as well, but do you, do you and the players look at those performances and ending those sort of runs as an example of what you can do here tomorrow? We have to change it, and the opportunity comes there. There's a lot of things that we can, we can do um, to write that story very differently tomorrow. We know that, and, um, and it's going to be about putting a very, very strong performance, collective and individually, to earn the right to, to win the semi-final. James from ESPN. Hi, Mikel. Um, do you think you can go for it here, or, or are we likely to see a more kind of disciplined performance like City away, where you try and stay in the game and, and, and it's more sort of cagey? Well, depending, depending as well in, in that approach, uh, for sure I want my team to be ourselves. And regardless of the stadium, sometimes you want to do certain things, the opponent doesn't allow you to do it, uh, but we want very clear how we're going to play the game, where we want to play that game, and what is going to give us the best chance to win it. Gentlemen in the glasses. Hi, Mikkel. Um, in Germany, everybody's talking about Xabi Alonso and Bayer Leverkusen and how they are dominating the league and were able to dominate Bayern. I would like to know, did you analyze Xabi's Leverkusen in order to prepare for the game tomorrow and did you have the chance to speak to Xabi to ask him for some advices? Well, first of all, big congratulations to Xavi and Granit because he was our player as well. So happy for them. I'm very impressed for what they've done. And uh, I just I congratulate him, obviously, because we are good friends and because I'm really happy for them. But that's a different story. Uh, we don't face uh, their competition regularly, and it's a um, it's a Champions League tie, so the game is very very different. Sam from the Telegraph. Hi, Mikel. Hi. I just ask you, a can about this slightly weird situation that seems to be brewing with Alex Zinchenko and, and the fans and some of them even seem to jeer when he came off at the weekend and it seems to be a thing that's sort of bubbling away. Are you aware of that? What, what do you make of it and what would you say to any fans who doubt Alex? Uh, we love Alex. Uh, that is giving us so much. He has given us a lot and um, he's a player with, with different qualities, um, with an unbelievable courage to play football in any circumstances. And uh, as we always demand, to stay with our players, give them support, because for sure they're going to perform better. Simon from the standard. Mikel, when, you, when you've got people now saying this is the point where Arsenal faded last year, this is the point where they fade away, is that something that you, you block out from the team so they don't hear that noise? Or do you say, look, this is what people are saying about you, prove them wrong? I cannot control that. I cannot take their phones, their TVs away, the people around them. Um, I lost, uh, we didn't lose anything last year because we didn't win anything. And first of all, you have to win it and then maybe you can lose it. Uh, what we had is an unbelievable journey against the best team in the world um, here and in Europe in the last seven years. And this is where we want to be. And we're not satisfied. We want to be better. And that's the level that we are competing with. So 
we'll try again our best in the last day to try to bring those cups and, and be successful. Jordan from the Sun. Hi, Mikel. Hi. How important is it to get the team right for, and from the start? In, in, in the first leg, you brought up Kiriot at half time. There are some issues. Just how much have you been thinking about it and, and how crucial is it that you get key positions right? Yeah, every game we will try to make the best possible decision um, regarding the moments that the players are in, um, the opponent, the scenario, a little bit considering every fact and, and not only to start the game but as well how the game can develop in relation to game state and um, that's what we planned. Okay, Kai from Football London. Mikhail, just following on from Sam's question about Alex, he's got two years left on his, his contract, sort of that time traditionally where you make a decision on the player's future. I just wondered... Have you made any decisions on Alex's future? Well, the decision is to be focused on the Champions League quarterfinals to be through tomorrow. Got a gentleman here. Hi, Mikkel. Hi. Uh, Bukayo Saka and uh, Martin Odegaard had some issues on, on the game against Aston Villa. Um, are they an option for, for the game tomorrow? Are they yeah. Hopefully, yeah, today, obviously, we had only um, less than 48 hours to recover from the game and, and we've done very, very little training. So we'll assess them tomorrow and see how they are. Okay, we'll do the last two now. Firstly, over here. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Um, after the first leg, Erdogan mentioned there were sometimes a bit of hard and difficult working conditions for him, a bit of man marking at times. Um, in what way is that something you have addressed before this match? Well, I think they are very used to that. It's a lot of teams. Uh, when we played a few days ago against Aston Villa, the holding midfielder had very similar behaviours. Um, it's normal that free up other spaces, other players, and uh, and I think they are very, very much um, understanding that certain situations open up others. Okay. Finally, we'll go to Nick from the Guardian. Yeah. Um, just how transformative would a result? a win tomorrow be? Obviously, um, obviously it's been 15 years without a semi-final. I mean, would this be a result that brings the club on, on to the next level or makes a real statement like that? Absolutely. It would be unbelievable. If we, if we make it happen tomorrow, we end the semi-final, we'll be in a really high emotional state, uh, which is something that we haven't achieved as a club for the last 15 or 17 years, and, um, and that's the opportunity. Okay. Thanks, everyone. See you tomorrow. Thank you.